So you're one of those math nerds who wants to talk about spreadsheets and data and percentages and damage while playing a video game. Hey, me too. Let's talk about it. Hey everyone, it's Night Haro here, and today I want to explain the basics of the Combat Metrics add-on, otherwise known as CMX. So this is an amazing add-on, one of the best that has been put in the game so far. It is by Solanur, who I believe was a graduate physics student when he started, and I, I hope, I think he's graduated by now. But it's an amazing add-on, does a lot of really cool things, but let's go ahead and talk about this. And even if you're not on PC, I use this in all my build guides to kind of explain everything because it puts all the information in such a compact and really nice way so that you can kind of look at it and know everything you need to know. So starting off here, we're on the damage cause tab. You can also do healing done, damage received, healing received. There's also fight stats, combat logs, there's graphs. But the two main pages you need to know are, if you're, if you're a DPS, are the fight stats and then the info page. Right here is the symbol for whatever character it is, what CP it's at. Uh, and then down below, you have, of course, the at name and all kinds of other information. And then over here on the right, you have the CP that is currently slotted and points are put into. And a little bit further over to the left, we see bar one, bar two. And then, of course, you see each skill here. Now, this is when it can get pretty complicated. You'll see time. And you see that the left bar and the right bar equal 100%. That's how long you're on that bar. Are, and that can be useful information. The number sign or ampersand is the number of casts of a given skill, including light and heavy attacks. The weave time, and it's really nice. I put a tool tip here. I don't know if that was always there, but the average time wasted until the next skill is cast. Now, what that means is, let's take a look here. Let's say subterranean assault here, and I have 0 0.35. What that means is that in ESO, you can always cast a skill and a light attack in one second. Okay, you got to be really efficient to be able to do it, but it is possible. But you know, but no human is actually perfect. And what this tells you is the wasted time in between skill casts. So instead of being one second apart, there in this case, it's 1.35 seconds on average that I cast subterranean assault. And with barb trapped, it's 1.45 seconds in between casts. So it's the wasted time here. And you can see for each skill, this can be very helpful for kind of problem solving, but we'll talk about that at a later date. I'm not really going into problem solving on CMX in this video. So we have that there. And then down here at the bottom, you see our weaving average. That's just the average of all of these weave times on both of our bars and then here under total this is the total wasted time these tooltips i feel like are new uh the, this total wasted time is is basically time where i was just too slow and so basically my character wasn't doing anything for this long of the parse and when you first start out like 27 seconds seems like a lot right but man when i first started out this was crazy it would be like it'd be like minutes it'd be like one fifth of my parse i was not being efficient and that is totally normal if you have that that's totally how you will start start out, well, this will be, you know, super high over a minute, whatever it happens to be. It may be two minutes, whatever it is. Uh, so that's how that works. And then here under miss, what this means is the number of times where you didn't cast a light attack and then cast a skill. So normally you light attack skill, light attack skill, and this is telling you how many light attacks you missed whenever you were going to cast a skill. And then time, this is the average time between sub subsequent activations of the skill. So what that means, that's a little bit confusing to say, this means that on average, I cast Arctic Blast every 21.64 seconds and Fetcher I cast every 24.86 seconds. Now, if we take a look at those skills, we see that Fetcher actually has a 20 second duration and that Arctic Blast also has a 20 second duration. So pulling back up our CMX, we see that, okay, well, I let, on average, I cast this four times and on average, I let it tick off for almost five seconds each time. So that means there's 20 seconds, almost a full cast of Fetcher Infection that I could have added in there to have 100% uptime of this damage over time ability. So information like that can be helpful. And then down here, we have our weapon attack. This is how many times you light or heavy attacked. And then our skill cast, how many total skills we cast. So in theory, usually your weapon attacks will be lower than your skill cast, but you want these to approach each other. If they, if they aren't similar, then that tells you, you know, your misses are going to be higher. Those numbers are related. And then down below here on the left, you see under equipment, these are color coded, at least so I'm told I'm pretty colorblind, but you can see that the Zon is a blue item, so that means it's light, and sure enough, when we mouse over it, it tells us, and then I believe these are green, and that shows that it's medium, and, and I'm sure heavy is a different color, although I'm not quite sure off the top of my head. And then, of course, the trait on that item, and then the enchantment on that item, including our weapons front and back bar here. So this page right here will generally tell you the entire setup of what somebody is running. Pretty much all the information you want to know is on this page to be able to kind of copy a build. Now, moving over to 
fight statistics. So the main things here, I won't go over everything on this page, but of course you're looking for your, your DPS. That's right here. You can also see what you're DPSing on. If there's, if you're actually cleaving some other ad or something else, total damage done, and then percentage of health. And then right here in the center, uh, this is actually, all three of these are selectable. And so you can see stamina and magicka. Those are the two main ones that you're concerned about because your stamina or magicka crit might be different numbers. You can see for critical damage, you're effective. This is capped at 125. You can see that I'm way over. And so that could lead us to maybe want to change some things or do something different. Also hugely important is penetration. You can see I'm at full penetration because my max is actually over the effect. Effective. That just means that I'm doing more penetration than I can actually use on the dummy. I'm reducing its armor effectively to zero, so the extra penetration doesn't do anything. These two numbers, your critical damage and your spell penetration, are generally the two main ones that you want to take a look at here, as well as spell critical to a little bit lesser extent. Now, down below on the right here, we have abilities cast, and you can actually see how much DPS each one of these skills contributed, the percentage of your overall damage that they contributed, the total damage, critical hits, the maximum damage, average damage you did with that skill, and so on and so forth. The main thing I would look at here is, of course, your crit percentage. That can be important for determining if something is crit farmed. Like, you see subterranean assault critted 83% of the time, which is just crazy. <laughs> and you can see that my spell critical is, on average, the effective critical rating is 61%, and this got 83% crits. That's crazy. And this is how you can tell if something has been crit farmed. If you look down here and you see most of the skills have crazy high crit, but the actual critical that they should be getting is much lower then you kind of know that, hey, they just got lucky on that parse. And if you do enough parses, you will get one that will end up doing five or 10K more damage. It, you know, 10K being very rare, 5K being more common. And it could just as easily be worse. You know, you could have bad crit as well. So keep that in mind. I see that a lot of times, you know, pretty much all creators um, will tend to crit farm so that they can post the highest number on a parse. You know, it's not really, it seems like it's bad, but you know, we have to normalize the data somehow. And so if one person does it, we kind of all need to do it. I tend not to do crit farms just because I don't have time. For <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, <laughs> but just know that that's how you can kind of check. This can also tell you, you know, what are the most important skills? Where is most of your damage coming from? And, you know, if you find a skill way down here at the bottom, then you might go, okay, well, not too much of my damage is coming from that skill. Not necessarily how you want to swap out things on your bar, but it is useful information. And like you can see here that Arms of Reliquin is doing a ton of damage, right? It's the second highest thing here. All right. And then after that, we have buffs and debuffs in and out. Now, sometimes you'll see multiple instances of this, and you'll see that mostly when you're parsing on the trial dummy, and that's because it gives you a lot of buffs and debuffs and applies a lot of buffs and debuffs. For example, minor vulnerability here. You see that there's two uptimes listed here, and there's a number of times it's been applied. So the 76% number, that's how much I actually applied minor vulnerability, and the 100% is what's already on the dummy. So you can actually see uptime. So Alkosh is 100% on the dummy, but I applied it 0% of the time. So that's how you can see that. Similarly with engulfing, which is a DK ability. So you can see all the buffs and debuffs on the target. Useful things when you have drop downs here, this tells you about stacks on Reliquin. So Reliquin can stack up to 10 times and you can see the percentage. Okay, I had one stack 99% of the time, two stacks 98. And that's what you should typically see. If I'm missing a lot of stacks or if I'm single barring Reliquin, you'll see this drop off a lot and these numbers will not look nearly this good. Something else useful for, you know, this particular build, this is a Brittleden build and I am using the Master's Eye Staff and that's actually going to be a buff in. So we'll move over here and it's going to be destructive impact. And you see it's up 43% of the time, which is really bad. You want this closer to 80 or 90 with a Brittleden build running that particular staff because it's basically the equivalent of a five piece set buff and you don't want that dropping off. And you know, you can see all kinds of other stuff here. And so this is kind of how you can look and check your buff up times here. And I think that's it. You know, there's a lot more that you can look at. Uh, you, could, you could get into the graphs if you really wanted to, mo almost nobody does, but there are reasons to get into it and there's plenty of other things. It's also hugely important to note that CMX works in content. You don't need to do this just on a dummy. So you can always pull this up if you have this add-on on PC and check what your penetration is and check what your effective critical is. And those are things that can be really useful to check whenever you're in a pug group or something like that and you're not sure what buffs or debuffs are going out. You can just check it for yourself. Or if you're in an organized group, you can check it and like, hey, what's going on with this? It seems like we got, you know, poor up times on this and you can talk to them. Although typically there's, a, there's easier ways with like buff the group and some other add-ons that can help you. But anyways, I think that's it. I just wanted to kind of provide a basic 
overview of CMX. It's such an amazing add-on and it's so nice that we have it in ESO. And you know, since I do the, use this on so many of my builds, I want to make sure that you guys had a pretty good idea of at least how to read it. But anyways, that's it for today. I hope this was helpful and we'll catch you in the next one.